I've really been missing live music. <laughs> I've been missing all those great concerts. I've missed all the various and festive street fairs that we have here all summer long that celebrate our diversity as well as our joy that summer has once again returned. I miss our Fridays on Front as well as the annual Vancouver Symphony in the Park and all that great free musical stuff. I miss the buskers on the sidewalk. And the little concerts of students showing off their chops. <laughs> But most of all, I miss those really big music festivals with tons of people, all of us grooving together on the same thing. I miss all of that this summer. I began to think about the jazz festival that I usually go to, and that would have come and gone by now. I was ready to start going to Fridays on Front, watching the kids play their games while mom and dad grabbed a beer. I wanted to return to dancing to some great music at Uptown Live. I'd been saving up my appetite for our huge food truck festival, but things changed and quickly once we knew this was going to be more than just a flu. This was a pandemic. That was when New Westminster began to see that things, heck that life, were changing, and rapidly. Our summer was changing. You can imagine what that did for the folks who organize all these events. Um, I think it happened pretty quick. So mid-March, we were seeing businesses were starting to close. And at that point, we kind of thought it was going to be a temporary closure, something we were going to do for a few weeks, and then we could all bounce back and get into the swing of things. But um, I think it was about mid-April when we, we had a board meeting and as we approached that board meeting, it was looking more and more apparent that, you know, the recommendation at first was going to be that we scale it down or that we change the way that we do it. And as the meeting approached, it became like quickly we realized, no, the recommendation is going to have to be that we cancel all live events. But, um, and then by the time that board meeting came around, there wasn't even a discussion. It was so clear the, the mandate from the provincial health authorities and the city and everyone that we worked with that there was just I mean 50 people was the maximum for gatherings at that time and we certainly didn't fall within those numbers so it was pretty clear at that point that we were going to have to completely change what the summer of 2020 was going to look like. Well we were all really disappointed this year that Uptown Live had to be cancelled uh, due to COVID-19. We made that decision fairly early on when it became very obvious that we weren't going to be able to bring together large, uh, large crowds this summer in an outdoor space. And um, really, you know, we, we, we were wondering, you know, what we could possibly do and our discussions with our sponsors, with Creative BC and the, and the Canadian uh, Live Music uh, Association uh, we were really talking about, you know, how we could pivot and maybe do, still do something and, and reach the goal of getting the industry working at again, again at a very difficult time. But as the pandemic wore on, it became very obvious that the city needed to find something for all its people who needed to do more than just stay home. Uptown and downtown each came up with some interesting solutions. What do we do? How are we going to still promote our businesses how are we still going to put downtown new west on the map and we had a desire to provide something for all those people so um we put our thinking caps on and we were able to do a couple of different initiatives um, um self-directed mostly online um and so when we were looking at what could we do with fridays we thought a scavenger hunt style of event would be a cool way to bring people downtown hunt so it's a series of questions that gets released every friday at noon it's all online so you download it onto your phone 
and it takes you through downtown New West. So it'll um, ask you questions where you need to go find the location. We've got to figure out what we're talking about first then find that location, get to that location and then answer the question. So pretty simple concept, but fun. It gets people out. I think the feedback from people has been that they've discovered all sorts of things that they didn't know. Um, we've got so much great public art and interesting little corners. So it was um, a good opportunity to show some of those to people who, you know, weren't familiar with all the little different um, elements in downtown New West. And we settled on producing the uh, seven live sessions at Massey Theatre, which is, you know, an iconic, uh, iconic landmark uh, theater in New Westminster that we all love. And it was great to be able to involve them get them working again. And uh, so we produced seven different sessions and uh, we put it together into a two hour broadcast, which aired on August 22nd. It's available for viewing on uptownlive.ca. And, um, you know, we've certainly uh, reached our, our goal of uh, getting the BC music industry working again. But what about when the weather gets cooler? Fall and winter might provide some real challenges for us here in New Westminster. And what about the next year? This will likely be still going on next year. Of course, some people were already thinking that way. Um, but yeah, moving ahead, I would say the fall is certainly a challenge that we're looking to and trying to just now really wrap our heads around where we're going to be at come December, November, December, and what the holiday season could look like. And I don't think I'm quite there yet as to yeah. what we're going to do. Um, that's going to take a while for us to shift back to being comfortable in tight, big groups again, I think. So I'm also wouldn't rule out the fact that uh, next year at an event like Uptown Live, where we would uh, have several cameras out and we would uh, shoot the entire uh, main stage at Uptown Live in 2021 and live stream that out. So if people were uncomfortable coming to um, an event with a, a large number of people, they could stay home and, and watch um, Uptown Live 2021 uh, online as well. So, I mean, the ticket prices for large, big, big uh, act events uh, in large venues are, are already high. I think people would be quite happy to spend generally the same amount of money, 150 bucks, to go to see somebody good outside where there's only a thousand people, but you can, you know, have a glass of wine, take it back to your seat and even have events like that that are socially distanced. Yeah. So, I anticipate that, you know, once COVID is, I guess if you could say over, <laughs> whenever that will be, um, there's going to be a lot of art that comes out of it. We're already seeing that just, I think, on Instagram and different places, but um, certainly quite a number of artists here in the studio have created a COVID-related art. Like, New West has always been a really tight-knit community, a super supportive community. Um, but when something horrible like this happens, um, you really see the helpers shine. And um, if it was things from people delivering groceries to people or businesses helping each other out, we have a private Facebook group that with businesses were connecting and helping each other figure out and navigate all these different grants and information. And they were really there for each other. And I think that, um, you know, a strong community gets stronger through something like this. But what about all the artists and vendors that I see at the street fairs? Some vendors like Katarina that runs the local Sweet Legs outlet are doing pop-ups or going online. You have to get creative in a pandemic. What about the artists and craftspeople I usually see at these street fairs? Do they still create and have a way to reach out to people? Do they still paint, make jewelry, create art? Luckily, here in New West, we've had a bi-weekly craft market going all this summer. It helps, but there are also other ways that the city is helping out. There's a new art project showing in downtown New West inside the now-closed Anvil Center. It is from the Garden Gals, who are gardeners as well as artists. Through this show, they were able to encourage each other and inspire many, including me. So it seems that from the tiny sidewalk art on Front Street to the murals we see around town, art is still alive in New Westminster during this pandemic. 
especially at, at as well-known a location as the 100 Braid Street Studios. It seems that even something like a pandemic just can't keep this iconic collection of local artists in their studios down. Uh, well, um, it has been a huge challenge. So uh, we started out with 57 artists uh, at the beginning of COVID and we are now down to 18. Um, it's been a, a, a big learning curve, uh, just like I think many other businesses. Uh, in, in the case of the studios, um, really my the entire business is dependent on um artists who rent space from from us right. and then we also do weddings and events so all of those things uh including our paint nights and our open mic nights everything that we do here has been affected by COVID. it's been very very difficult um a lot of artists have um lost their jobs um and or as a professional artist they're not able to you know, sell art. <laughs> um, so it, we have had a lot of artists leave the studio, unfortunately, and it has affected everyone in a different, in each artist in a different way. Um, some artists I found are able to create art. In some cases, they will create art. They have created art about COVID. We have one artist who um, has really been at home for the entire um, the entire time because he has a family member who is high risk so he's been taking a photo out of his window every single day and then creates art from that i think there will be there will be some artists who come through this by creating art about it and then i mean for myself i i paint landscapes and for me i paint plain air so getting out and going out into you know the landscape and painting that that's that's a real solace for me it really has been we're starting, we're going to be starting uh, paint nights, uh, virtual paint nights, three nights a week. If people want to participate, they can pick up the paint. We have put it into a little kit, then you can go to your home. You can get your glass of wine and then sit and paint. And so um, it's gone really well. I think the, the most wonderful scenario we had was uh, a woman who wanted to spend some time with her mother who was in Germany. And her mother was supposed to come here to New West for a visit that with COVID wasn't going to happen. So they had a paint night with us and they were able to interact with each other or uh, the time was an issue, but they worked it out. And to, to be able to have facilitated that really meant a lot. For first Saturday open studio, we are uh, the first Saturday of every month. We are open from one till 5 PM. Not all of the artists are in their studios, but I'm, I'm, or someone from the studio is here. So if you see something in someone's studio, we can then open the door, you can go in and take it. Um, and so people can come in and then, you know, take a little tour through the studios. And um, there is enough spacing that if the artist is in their studio, you can be in the hallway and that's for sure, you know, enough distance apart. They can always come out, then you can go in and actually look at the art in their studio. So we've had quite a number, um, I would say that, what some of the most heartening stories a couple who came in uh they said that they they usually go on holiday during the summer uh, uh up north they said this was not a year where they felt comfortable doing that so they decided to to purchase some art that would actually make them feel connected to nature but not all art is done alone some art such as theater and music especially if you're in a rock band is collaborative I love live music, and I'm really missing it. But I love theater too, though I don't go as much as I always intend to. But if I am missing it, I can imagine how much the performers must be missing it. Of course, being live performers, they adapted. They found solutions, at least until things open up again. But it hasn't been easy. Um, I am an installation and theatrical artist, uh, a historian researcher, a nerd. <laughs> um, uh, what I mostly do, um, I work in theater. I'm a costume designer, mostly by trade. I also do hair and makeup. I've done set design, but it's been a while. I also worked disaster relief when I was younger, in my 20s. So wow. when they started talking about um, 
pandemic when they started talking about quarantine and I said well everything's gonna be shut down this summer <laughs> um, that was not a, a surprise to me that was that's the only way we're gonna move forward is they're gonna have to shut everything down um, so it was simply a matter of when they were gonna shut everything down how soon they were gonna do it not if they were gonna do it and I think there was a lot of um, back and forth in my industry. Are they gonna close? Is my show gonna run? Is it, and, and every conversation I had, I, I kept saying to colleagues, oh, it's gonna close. <laughs> They're gonna shut it down. We're all getting shut down. We're all getting shut down. And you know, there was a lot of, well, that's a bit fatalistic. Is it? No, it's not, it's a pandemic. They're gonna shut it down. The fears amongst, um, um, amongst us all of when is it going to reopen? When are we going to work again? I think that's been the hardest thing to navigate is just the um, the real depression that's sort of like a wave of depression that's taken over um, the theater community is um, because we all genuinely love our work. Half the fun of the theater is that it's collaborative art. You get a bunch of artists together with separate backgrounds and very different uh, artistic points of view and we all hash out this one piece of art that has many moving parts and it is a, a complicated dance and we're all of us very good at it we're very good at cooperating and and making our ideas work with somebody else's ideas and that energy that comes in the production meeting when the lighting designer says hey i was thinking about that uh, the way that fabric moves um and I was talking to the sound guy and he was saying the sound of that fabric. And we were wondering, what if we mic'd like on the hip? And then I go, hey, that's a great idea. And then suddenly we're buzzing, you know? Um, where the set designer says, I, was, I, I saw this, the, the color of that crinoline and I was thinking, and I, or I say, hey, I noticed you had a collection of vases in the upstage and I was thinking, and then suddenly we're buzzing, you know? And that, um, that lovely feeling of, uh, it's not quite the same uh, when we do that. I've had digital production meetings. It's not quite the same as being an in-person production meeting, having those conversations. Um, Life before COVID was very busy. We were playing lots, lots going on, lots of shows. Um, up until about March, I think it was, when we started uh, started having cancellations and pulling out of shows um, due to the uncertainty of COVID. So originally we actually pulled out while the shows were still scheduled. Um, some people were kind of uh, negligent to it. I think at that point it hadn't fully set in. So some bands I think were staying on these bills, um, hoping that everything would be fine. But, um, you know, we kind of, pulled out for our own, you know, personal health issues. Um, we didn't want to risk anything. And in the end, um, all the shows did end up getting canceled and venues eventually closed down. Many of which have not reopened. Initially, some, we noticed some venues kind of closed right away. Others were like, no, we're still open. And then I think it was probably near the end of March where eventually it was like, okay, everything shut down. Um, and then that was it. And then um, since then we've kind of seen um, – the wave of live streams and different uh, streaming platforms pop up and people have moved to that in the time being with the uncertainty of COVID and all. It turns out that there are ways to still collaborate during a pandemic. You might have to get creative in your solutions on how you do it. But then again, maybe this is just another challenge after all. Isn't being challenged simply a part of being an artist? I'm finding um, a lot of digital performances happening. Um, there's, there's always been digital performance, but now it's really sort of the, the main medium, isn't it? Um, I joined a digital theater troupe on a whim. We're global. 
which makes setting up uh, rehearsal times really fun. <laughs> um, but um, there, and there's a delight in that, in that many of us were theater professionals and we'd forgotten how much just fun putting on a play is, just to put on a play. No, no pressure, no budgets, no deadlines, no patrons, no unions. We're just putting on a play and people are watching it and that's it. And there's something really um, dazzlingly fun. It reminds you when you were you know, a kid just starting out and just learning about this magical world. Um, but it, it's not just amateur digital performances that are happening. Professional theater companies are transitioning to digital seasons. Um, you're, you're getting professional digital performances. Um, and I think the things that everyone likes to complain about with Zoom and Google Hangouts and, and these various digital platforms, they are the same kind of strange hiccups that you get from real physical in your face live performances, you know, time delays and blackouts and issues with, uh, you know, anything can happen in a live performance. And I think that actually translates quite well to a digital medium. Anything could happen in a digital performance, you know? Yes. Yeah, so we have, um, we've kind of chosen to put our focus towards our um, latest album that we're working on and recording, mixing ourselves. So we've been kind of totally focused and dialed in on that while all this chaos is happening. <laughs> um, trying not to miss playing the live shows too much, but uh, obviously we do, because that's, that's what we're all about. We live to play the live shows. So we are fortunate. We have a kind of barn, man cave type um, facility that uh, is able to still operate under, um, under the, like the health and safety guidelines and all that, and it's a gigantic place, so we are able to be socially distance and all that um i know a lot of other bands you know kind of practice in a 12 by 12 room so i kind of feel for them and you know there's uh there's not a lot of other options out there really right now so i think a lot of bands probably have kind of um had to revert to uh you know transmitting ideas electronically um we're kind of used to working remotely anyways as we're as a band because we're kind of spread out we all live different parts of the lower mainland so we've kind of we're kind of used to that aspect already where we'll bounce ideas off each other through email we'll, we'll kind of record stuff we'll all record stuff individually send it back and forth you know, one guy might re-record everything at his house and then kind of send a demo out. So that's usually how we work and get ideas flowing. I think, um, yeah, obviously we've seen the, you know, the rise of like the driving concerts and other, uh, you know, the, the Twitch streams and the other live performances. I know some venues now are doing like, shows and then streaming the shows obviously with no audience i've kind of noticed that popping up lately as well mm -hmm. some of like the bigger bigger name venues and obviously you know i, I think that's a good idea because we we want to see we want to see the venues keep their doors open too right so if if they can adapt and adjust to kind of keep going and make it through this but what will all this look like after? Is there hope for bringing back some of the live art we all crave next summer? Or is it too soon to even be thinking this way? Even creativity needs hope. Maybe especially so. If there's anything artists know how to do, it's looking to the future. There are theater companies that will not survive. There are companies that just won't. And there are companies that won't that it'll break our heart they didn't. And there are companies that won't, that we all knew were toxic is all get out and we're kind of glad they didn't. And it's not, it's, it's not gonna just come down to money. Money isn't gonna be the only reason this theater company survived versus that theater company. It's, it's going to be how are they adapting to what we are all going through. I think there's gonna be a bit more of a dichotomy 
in theater arts practice moving forward for a little while. And right now you're seeing a lot of, no, throw that out the window, let's try something else. There's a lot of venues that have been closing down permanently that we've played and many other bands have played and cut their teeth at. And now we're kind of seeing them close their doors, which is, which is disappointing. Um, on the flip side, once, once this is all over eventually, I think we will see new venues pop up too and kind of go from there. Uh, well, all the bands that make it through this period, I think everyone's going to be eager to play. And I, I hope to see a lot of <clears throat> shows and tours and especially big name acts. I hope to see everything rescheduled and, and uh, you know, a, a good turnout at shows. I hope people get out and go support their local bands and watch live shows and, and all that. Fans and the bands, we've been deprived. <laughs> There's going to be uh, an influx of new music, which I think is positive, especially, you know, bigger bands, bigger bands that I like to listen to. And, you know, everyone's kind of, well, we're not playing live, so let's, let's write more music. So that's exciting, obviously. And um, I think, you know, that'll be great once, once it's over, because then everyone's going to be kind of like, hey, look, we got, we got something new we want to play, and we want to play our stuff. So I think there's going to be a lot of hype due to that. And I think any band that, you know, kind of survives the COVID phase will obviously be coming out with new material to to show off and play. So I think that's exciting for me, for sure. In situations like this, there's always a lot of opportunity for change. And um, yeah, it's just a matter of kind of shifting and pivoting a little bit. And I know the community, New Westminster community is so supportive of, of the studio. And uh, I think maybe that's a, a, an amazing thing that has come from this is that people have realized what's truly important to them and art to get through a crisis is a very powerful thing and a lot of people have actually recognized that uh, artists who are creating right now are very much uh, under the shadow of plague and i think uh, at least going off of the history uh, of our industry um, plague the aftermath of plague closures have always affected what the shows are that come when the theater comes back. I think people are gonna to wanna to see a lot of happy things. I think, and I don't mean that, that that means that they want mindless things, but I think people want to laugh. Um, I think people want to be in a room with other people smiling, not necessarily lighthearted. Cause I think we are all learning, you don't have to have a light heart to be joyous, but joy can come from, you know, strange places but I think that we're going to see a lot of theater that is centered on that sort of concept. And I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> it should be interesting. So while we may not have a return to the big outdoor events and concerts by next summer, it may not be a completely silent summer in 2021. Event organizers will have time to plan for the kinds of get togethers we can have, though perhaps in a more limited way. You can bet that musicians and performers will take the time to create new and exciting material and find ways to get those ideas in front of an audience. After all, it is not only us, their audience, that is missing that live connection. It is what we all miss, performers and audience alike. But there is hope, and hope always springs eternal within any creative heart. Hope for new ideas, hope for a new world after all of this, and most of all, hope for more connection. With that hope, we look forward to a new year and new ways where we will all celebrate the warmth of the sun again together. And when we do, I hope to see all of you there. Be kind to one another and stay safe.